Questions were being asked about the highest rising of the volcano in Mount Ogun on the island of Bali. The volcano has been showing activity with tremors since September. 100,000 people near Mount Ogun have been evacuated, with many fearing that there will be a major eruption soon. Ashes have come down from the volcano along with little blasts that could be heard miles away. As huge ash clouds rise from the volcano, Mount Ogun's airport has been closed. 445 flights have been delayed, affecting 59,000 travelers. China has issued warnings to its travelers. Some of those who have not been evacuated believe that they'll be safe because the, of the last eruption, which has happened 54 years ago, didn't reach the people within the exclusion zone. But more than a thousand people on the island have died last time Mount Agun erupted in 1963. Coal lava, which is a mixture of water and rock fragments, have been spotted in the fields and rivers near the volcano. A few weeks ago, there were rumors saying that Wonder Woman and Justice League star Gal Gadot was refusing to work with producer Brett Ratner in Rat Pack Entertainment. Ratner was a producer on the Wonder Woman movie, which was critically acclaimed for its inspirational superhero story. Gadot's distaste for the producer is likely a result of allegations of sexual harassment and abuse against the filmmaker. Gadot recently appeared on the talk show Today to clarify the speculation. As she responded with, Everyone knows the way I feel because I'm not hiding anything. There are so many people involved in making this movie, it's not just me. And they all echoed the same sentiment. Everyone knew what was the right thing to do. She finally ended the interview with, There was nothing for me to actually come and say because it was already done before this article came out. On November 28, 2017, a ship arrived from North Korea on the west coast of Japan, filled with dead bodies and skeletons. Japan authorities said eight skeletons were found on the wooden boat. The wooden bow arrived from the island of Honshu. The bodies are thought to be fishermen who were killed in the sea. The United Kingdom's Prince Harry and an American actress Meghan Markle will an announce that they are engaged. Markle, who has played roles in the hit show Suits and the movie Horrible Bosses, is 36 years old. It will be the first marriage for Prince Harry, who is 33 years old, and Markle's second. Markle says she's very happy as she flashed her ring, which was designed by her husband to be. The ring has a gold band and its centerpiece is a large diamond from Botswana with two smaller outer diamonds. Meghan Markle says she plans to be a permanent UK citizen, though the process could take several years if she wants a dual citizenship. After marrying the prince, Markle will become the fourth patron of the Royal Foundation, a charity set up in 2009. Much was made about the fact that Markle is half black. The Guardian, a UK newspaper, wrote that headlines Britain's relationship will face, will race, will change forever. The royal family confirmed the news regarding engagement and the couple plans to be married in the spring of 2018 at St. George's Chapel. Two children from Nazo in the Guangxi province of China were reported missing by their teacher on November 23rd, but were found later that day. The two boys were said to be around eight or nine years old and were found at a station by security workers. The two boys hid in the undercarriage of the bus, which traveled 50 miles, and the workers were surprised that the boys were unharmed because of the long journey and steep slopes they passed. The worker said that the two boys hid in the undercarriage because they wanted to find their parents. Prince Mansour bin Makrim from Saudi Arabia was killed in a helicopter crash in the country's border with Yemen. Seven others were also killed in the crash. The prince was returning from an inspection tour. Prince Mansour, who served as the deputy governor of the Saudi Arabia, died hours after Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman began a royal purge that targeted corrupt politicians and business people. Dozens were detained, including 11 princesses and 41 ministers. Reports regarding White House say that Secretary Rex Tillerson might be replaced with CIA Chief Mike Pompeo. There have been concerns about Secretary Tillerson over foreign policy, and Secretary Tillerson described President Trump as a moron. North Korea's missile testing and Iran's nuclear program have been deferred due to other issues. Pompeo would be replaced at his CEA position by Republican Senator Tom Cotton. The new, appoint the new appointments may begin to happen as early as December or in January. A government shutdown seems more likely after Democratic leader Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi canceled their meeting on government funding with President Trump on November 28th. This came as a result of the president's tweet earlier in the day. In his tweet, the president expressed that he didn't believe that a deal could be reached. The Democratic leaders then went on to state that they did not wish to attend the meeting in which a deal could not be reached. A new meeting has been set up for December 7th. 
Skimmer and Velocity claim that they will walk in with an open mind rather than decide that a deal can be reached. Randall Sato, a man known for being extremely dangerous after the violent murder of Sandra Yamashiro in 1997, escaped from a Hawaiian psychiatric hospital on Sunday, November 12 at 9 a.m. Sato left the hospital outside Honolulu and flew to San Jose, California. After a four-day hunt, Sato was arrested by San Joaquin County Sheriff's deputies. The FBI and the U.S. Marshals Service are still trying to figure out how Sato obtained $1,500 for the chartered plane ticket. According to the Chicago Police, homicides have gone down 14% since last year. The total homicides this year have been 609 down from 710 homicides at this point last year. 2016 ended with 771 murders. Chicago has been criticized by President Trump over its failure to control gun violence. In between 2007 and 2015, Reported homicides hovered between 400 and 500 killed. North Carolina is in search of a three-year-old girl named Maria Woods who disappeared from her home on Sunday night. Although the officials have interviewed both Woods' mother and her living boyfriend, Maria's biological father, Alex Woods, thinks it's strange for someone to grab a three-year-old out of the room and suddenly disappear. After the Onslow County Sheriff's Office and FBI released a surveillance picture of a woman and a child, the authorities are asking for help to identify the woman and child because they're skeptical that the child might be Maria Woods. Many have offered their help, including four fire departments, the Oslo County Sheriff's K-9 units, North Carolina State Highway Patrol, and the Marine Corps by providing drones and helicopters for the search. Matt Lauer, who served as news anchor for the morning show today for two decades, was fired by NBC News on Wednesday after a female colleague made a complaint accusing him of appropriate sexual behavior during the 2014 SoCal Olympics. Co-worker noted that Lauer's behavior continued in the workplace after the games were over. Two more women made complaints about Lauer after he was fired. The woman said that they were lured inside his office. It was also reported that Lauer had a button at his desk that locked his office door. Cards Against Humanity has joined the battle for immigration. The party game company mentioned they purchased land on the U.S.-Mexico border to stop President Donald Trump's plan to build a wall. The Chicago-based company mentioned in a statement on its website that Donald Trump is a golem who is afraid of Mexicans. Cards Against Humanity started the project by offering six surprise gifts for $15. Just a few hours after it was announced on Tuesday, November 14, the promotion sold out. Breakout movie hit Get Out has been nominated for this year's Golden Globes, but people are having an issue with the film's award category. The movie about an African-American teen meeting his Caucasian girlfriend parents made $250 million at the box office. Its theme of racism and slavery were pretty clear to the audience, but somehow it was chosen as a nominee for Best Comedy. Quote star Little Ray Howery responded on Twitter, But if I can be honest, this is weird to me. There's nothing funny about racism. Was it that unrealistic? Director and writer Jordan Lee responded the news by saying Get Out is a documentary. On November 25th, Washington State University student Danny Messina posted on Twitter that she was fundraising for St. Jude Children's Hospital. She was inspired by one of her friends that was spending Thanksgiving in the hospital. She tweeted that she would donate 25 cents for every favorite and 50 cents for every retweet. She only planned on giving the hospital one grant and never expected the tweet would go viral. She ended up owing $200,000 due to all the retweets and favorites. She claims that she had to stop the fundraiser and start a crowdfunding project to donate to the hospital. Mars Adidas, Hewlett Packard, Deutsche Bank, and the beverage company of DIG have all pulled their ads from running on YouTube. This came after news surfaced that various channels found a way to exploit the YouTube algorithm in order to gain millions of views per video. These channels all found a way to sneak questionable content into the YouTube Kids app that show violent and Fidelic interpretations of po popular cartoon characters like Peppa Pig and Elsa. Backlash from parents caused many companies to pull their ads from YouTube and all related sites like Google. Other YouTube creators may see their content come under much more scrutiny with revenue taking a massive hit. UCLA freshman Langelo Ball was one of the three players and were definitely suspended after being accused of shoplifting in China. 
Niangolo Ball has not played a single game for UCLA basketball team and his father, Lavar, told ESPN that he was going to fool Angelo out of school. According to Lavar Paul, the plan is to get ready for the NBA draft and not transfer to another school. On Thanksgiving weekend, Nike and the NBA finally put together their all-new statement jerseys on the court. The jerseys were originally unveiled to the public on September 15th earlier this year. The statement jerseys are an alternate style jersey that are designed to express each team's spirit. Nike said the statement edition uniforms set the tone for big games or rivalries and is inspired by the team's desire to make a bold statement every time they step on the court. A year ago, the Oakland Raiders wide receiver Michael Crabtree came into conflict with Denver Broncos cornerback Aqib Talib. Talib broke a gold chain hanging from Crabtree's neck during the game. Sunday after Thanksgiving on November 26, the Raiders hosted the Broncos and the fans wondered if the two had gone over their squabble. With 12 minutes left of the first quarter, the Raiders had possession of the ball. It was clear that the two players weren't getting along and Crabtree started shoving Aqib on the sideline. The fight led to both of them tripping over a cameraman. After last year's chain breaking, Crabtree chafed his chain to his neck to be more safe. That didn't matter as Talib was still able to take hold of it. The fight started a brawl between both teams, which lasted a couple minutes. Crabtree and Talib were both ejected and have been suspended for two games for violations of unsportsmanlike conduct and unnecessary roughness rules. The Gonzalez Spartans defeated the Anzar Hawks 5-0 in a preseason home soccer match. Wrestling season has officially started and these are what they expect from the championship season ahead. to win league, go all league champ, and then win like a team again and get another YG, and then play top three into CS. Uh, my favorite drill is uh, life, and that's because it helps me, it helps me see what I need to improve on. It's, it's not, it doesn't take much. I mean, these I had these kids since they were, most of them since they were fifth grade. So the motivation, you got you got to find it within yourselves. You know, you try to make it as fun as possible for these guys. If you make it fun, uh, that's enough mo uh, motivation right there. Ah, that's not a fair question, <laughs> but uh, they all have talent in a certain way. It's really hard to measure about who is the best, you really can't say, because uh, everyone has their different skills, different style, so that's almost impossible to answer. 
Uh, they all have they all have good skills and good style, and and uh, very impressed with the team of what they have. Here's a recap of the 2017-2018 football season. My last football season here was great. Uh, we had a lot, lots of ups and downs in this experience, and uh, it was great to finish off the season with a win. How was your football season? I think my football season was pretty good, you know. I've never played football before, but I think for my first time playing, I did pretty good.
how was your last football season here at Gonzalez High? My last football season here at Gonzalez High was one of the best ones, you know. New coach, new coaching staff. Started from the beginning and we ended not so well, but the seniors coming up is gonna be a better team and might be champs, who knows. So are you planning to play next year? Uh, I'm not planning to play, but I am planning to practice with Harnell. That's one of my goals, my, something I might do. Thank you, sir. Last Friday at the Alisal Tournament, the Gonzalez Spartans played a tough Christopher team. Mariano. How do you think the team performed against Christopher? Um, our team performed was all right. Um, our team could have really handled the pressure that they gave us, but it was all right. What can the team do to improve? Uh, our team can improve by getting a little smarter with the ball and move quick. How, is it, how did the team perform against Christopher? In my opinion, the team performed pretty good. I mean, we played together, we tried hard. We didn't get the W, but it's all good. What can the team do to improve? I mean, we could improve by us upperclassmen acting more as leaders because we have three freshmen on the team and we gotta show them how to be better and push themselves harder as well as us. Here is a new episode of Chewy's Trick Questions. We're out here in, in Ghost Town Gonzalez. We're looking for somebody to interview. Well, look, here comes the lucky contestant. What kind of hair do oceans have? The oceans have? I think they have the waves. Uh, yeah, that's one. There's 12 puppies, all but eight die. Of the four. Why not? Four. All but eight, so eight survived. Four die. Oh. So what is brown and sticky? <laughs> it was a stick. Uh. Your mom had four children. She named them North, East, and South. What was the fourth one named? West. Is your name West? Yes. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Why are movie stars always cool? Hold up. Is it on Google? There's 12 puppies, all but eight die. How many are left? There's 12 puppies, all but eight die. There's eight. A father and his son get into a tragic car accident. The father dies and the son is taken to the hospital to get surgery. The doctor comes out and says, I can't operate this kid, he's my son. Who's the doctor? El Sancho, I don't know. Yes. No. Maybe. Who's the doctor? The kid's dad? The kid's dad already died. His mom? What goes up and down but stays in the same place? What goes up and down but stays in the same place? Why can't a woman 
living in the U.S. be buried in Canada? I don't know that either. Like, I know the answer. You want to know the answer? Yeah. Because she's still living, so you can't bury her. Yeah. Last week, the advanced floral class hosted a fashion show. Here's the footage. Welcome to our first ever annual fashion runway show. So this is our advanced floral class, and I ask you guys to please be respectful. Stay off your phones, or I'll say we'll be fine. Quiero rolar 